Sa lesson natin today, ang matututunan naman natin is kung paano mag-describe ng normal distribution at kung paano gamitin yung formula ng z-score para ma-standardize natin ng isang given raw score. Itong notation na nakikita nyo ngayon, ito yung standard notation sa ating normal distribution which is given by n parentheses mu comma sigma wherein yung mga Greek letters na nakikita nyo, ito yung symbol na ginagamit natin para sa mean at para sa standard deviation. Now, itong diagram na nakikita nyo, which is normally distributed or bell-shaped, ito yung tinatawag nating normal curve. At sa ating normal curve, yung ating center will always be your mean, at itong value na to, which is your spread, is your standard deviation. So, pagka ginamita natin ng formula ng z-score, which is z equal to x minus mu all over sigma, ang isang given data set na normally distributed, ito yung magiging bagong value natin sa ating standard normal distribution. So, parehas pa rin siyang normal, pero itong pangalawang normal curve natin, ang tinatawag natin standard normal distribution, na kung saan yung ating mean ay equal to zero at ang standard deviation natin is equal to one. Now, ang mga range of values ng mga z-score dito sa ating standard normal curve or standard normal distribution will be from negative 3 up until positive 3. So, today, malalaman natin kung paano natin i-apply itong formula na ito at yung standard normal distribution sa ilang mga word problems na gagamitin natin or sasagutan natin today. Katulad nung sinabi ko or nakita nyo kanina, ang z-score na given by this formula x minus mean all over standard deviation is the formula used to standardize the given value of x using the mean and the standard deviation. So, dito sa ating mga problems today, lagi tayong uh, bibigyan ng mean at ng standard deviation ng isang normal distribution. So, for example, ito yung ating normal distribution wherein yung mean ay given, which is 37, at yung standard deviation naman is 5. At yung x value natin, or yung specific individual dito sa ating normal distribution, is equal to 43. Na kung kailangan natin, or kung paano i-standardize yung value ng 43 sa ating normal distribution, gagamitan natin siya ng z-score given by this formula. So by direct substitution, pwede natin i-standardize yung ating score given by a mean of 37, a standard deviation of 5, and an x of 43 into a z-score. Gagamitin lang yung formula by direct substitution. x is 43, mean is 37, and standard deviation is 5. And by computation, z is equal to 1.2. Now, para mas ma-visualize nyo, kung nasaan ang location ng 1.2, gagamitan natin siya ng standard normal curve or standard normal, di normal distribution na kung saan alam natin yung value nung gitna is always equal to zero at meron tayong mga negative values dito at saka mga positive values na nandito naman sa kanan. So para lang siyang number line pero ngayon meron na tayo ngayong normal distribution sa ating number line at yung, ang z natin is 1.2, ang location ng z is from zero so, 1.2 away from the mean. So, ito lang yung estimate na ginamit natin. So, ito yung ating Z estimate or yung estimation ng ating line which is 1.2. So, therefore, na-convert natin yung ating score from raw score which is 43 at nagawa natin siyang Z is equal to 1.2 using our formula. Now, medyo vague pa rin kung bakit natin kailangan yung... Uh, z-score formula, pero pag in natin siya sa isang word problem, mas maiintindihan nyo kung bakit kailangan natin gamitin yung formula na ito sa statistics. At ito yung ating first word problem. In this word problem, ito yung SAT versus ACT. Yung SAT at saka ACT, ito yung test na kinukuha sa mga, ng mga high school students sa Amerika na gustong mag-apply para sa kanilang uh, universities. So in this word problem, Patricia scores 680 on the mathematics part of the SAT. Now the distribution of that SAT score is in reference with the population that is symmetric and single peaked with a mean of 500 and standard deviation of 100. Now on the other hand, manual 
takes the American College testing, which is ACT, and his score in that mathematics section is 27 points. Now, ACT scores also follows a symmetric single peaked distribution, but with a mean of 18 and a standard deviation of 6. Now, what we need to do is to find the standardized scores for both students, and assuming that both tests measure the same kind of ability, who has the highest higher score. So, in this particular word problem, kailangan daw nating compare kung sino yung nakascore ng mas mataas, kung si Patricia ba or si Manuel. Now, yung mga kakailanganin nating values dito, yung actual scores ni Patricia which is 680 points at binigyan din tayo ng mean ng mga kumuha ng SAT test na yon, which is 500 with a standard deviation of 100. At on the other hand, si Manuel naman, nag-take naman siya ng isa pang um, standardized test na kung saan ang kanyang score sa math section ay 27. Now, mapapansin nyo yung score ni Patricia at yung score ni Manuel, kung pagbabasihan lang natin yung numerical value, sasabihin natin na mas mataas yung score ni Patricia. However, tandaan nyo na yung SAT ay may roong scoring system na different sa ACT. So, titingnan natin ngayon na given yung mean ng ACT na 18 at standard deviation na 6, malalaman natin kung sino ba talaga ang nakakuha ng mas mataas na score. Kung si Patricia ba or si Manuel kung sa paggamit ng ating Z-score formula na pinakita ko kanina. At ito ngayon yung summary ng ating word problem kanina. So, si Patricia, dun sa kanyang SAT math score, nakakuha siya ng 680 points. Binigyan din or given din doon yung mean and standard deviation ng score nung, or ng mga score doon sa mga iba pang estudyante na kumuha ng test na yon At yung average nga nila is 500 with a standard deviation of 100. Ngayon naman, si Manuel naman, kumuha naman siya ng ibang test, yun yung ACT, at yung math score niya is 27 points. Now, mula doon sa mga grupo ng estudyante na kumuha ng ACT, yung average score nila for that particular test is 18 or 18 points with a standard deviation of 6. Now, ang task natin is to see who scored higher, kung si Patricia or si Manuel. Now, hindi natin basta-basta masasabing si Patricia agad yung nakakuha ng mas mataas na score base lang dun sa number na nakikita natin. So, kailangan natin siyang standardized. At dito pumapasok yung importance ng Z-score formula para sa pag-analyze ng mga scores nitong dalawang batang ito. So, using the Z-score formula, which is X minus mu all over sigma, nakuha natin na ang Z-value niya will be 1.8. So, ito yung Z-score ni Patricia mula doon sa given mean and standard deviation ng SAT. At kay Manuel naman doon sa ACT using the same formula, nakakuha naman siya ng Z-score na 1.5. So base dito sa Z-score na nakuha natin, na tinatawag ding standardized score, mapapansin natin na si Patricia talaga yung nakakuha ng mas mataas na marka kasi mas mataas yung Z-score value niya. At ito yung representation ng kanyang Z-score sa normal distribution. So sa standard normal distribution, wherein the average or the mean is equal to zero, ito yung location ng Z-score na 1.5 na mas malayo or mas malayo yung score na 0.1.8 doon sa 0 kaya masasabi natin na yung score na Z equal to 1.8 is better doon sa 1.5. So therefore, pwede na natin i-conclude na si Patricia nga yung nakascore ng mas mataas na points doon sa math part or math section ng test na kinuha nila compared kay manual na ginamitan natin ng Z-score formula.